flashback. So I'm curious what you are feeling. When is parade? When is parade? Thursday. No. <laughs> I need to go home. Hello. <laughs> okay. Uh, Three days later. You know that I, I told that uh, I don't want to stay on parade, but I fucking want to stay on parade. This is the best. <laughs> This is amazing. This is, uh, gonna remember this uh, our whole life. The Nuggets parade was rightfully, for the most part, filled with goofs, gifts, and memes featuring Nikola Jokic, Contavious Caldwell Pope, Jeff Green, Christian Brown, and Mike Malone. My baby! Yeah! I got a crazy idea, man. I got a crazy idea. I'm kind of crazy. I'm a little bit emotional. Let's do this shit again. Yeah! I can't wait to get my ring so I can go, Mwah. Everybody. Okay. We are, we're about to have two times the fun right now. Ready? We'll get to a cringeworthy moment later on that may have stirred up some controversy, but again, the Nuggets of course deserve to fully enjoy the moment. In terms of their playoff run, you can't fault a team for playing who was in front of them and owning the competition, or at least if you're not Chris Mannix of Sports Illustrated, who continues to discredit Nikola Jokic, even after all the disrespectful antics from analysts prior to Jokic winning the title. Now that Jokers won it, talking heads aren't giving in, but it's somehow even getting worse. As Ben Stiller once said, Get a load of this guy. I don't look at it as an all-time great playoff run because they didn't have a peer, really, that they went up against. What? And eat Bro, what Phoenix, are you talking about, man? As talented as they were, we all knew the flaws with that team, not the least of which was chemistry. I was as on board with the Lakers as, as anyone. I give the Nuggets Why credit for running? rolling through them in four straight, but they were certainly a, a flawed Get team. Now it's here. Miami, and I'm not going to dismiss oh, yeah. Miami Ooh. as just an eight seed. You know, Miami's better than that. I'd probably feel differently about Jokic if he had gone through Boston or Milwaukee oh, or in a matchup rich. with Joel Embiid in Philadelphia. <laughs> okay, I think it's a playoff run Slow that clap. elevates him I don't know if it elevates him to that top tier stratosphere. He answers every question that was ever out there about his ability to succeed in the playoffs. Playoffs. But to get to that next level of superstar, that all time great level of superstar, I want to see him go up against a team that you consider their equal or even consider their better to beat someone that you're staring down and you're the underdog in that particular series by a sizable amount. In the NBA, you play the team that's in front of you. In the NBA, you play the team that's in front of you. In the NBA, you play the team that's in front of you. Seconds. Yeah, yeah. I'd probably feel differently about Jokic if he had gone through Boston or Milwaukee or in a matchup with Joel Embiid. This plays playoffs. playoffs. This plays what? playoffs. Did this I plays stutter? playoffs. This yes. plays playoffs. This yes. plays playoffs. That this plays playoffs. Mad. Playoffs pushes Nikola Jokic. It's a level up, but it's not that all-time great level up just yet. Stop it. Get some help. Okay, this is bullying. And I do have to take it. <laughs> the championship team in any given year, regardless of the circumstances, obviously deserves the utmost amount of credit. Unfortunately, that's almost never the case, thanks to folks like Chris. Whether it was people saying the 2019 Raptors got lucky due to injuries, people saying the 2020 Lakers were merely bubble guppies, people saying the 2021 Bucks got lucky in a pandemic impacted year, People saying the Warriors got lucky because of John Morant's injury. And now, like you just saw, people saying the 2023 Nuggets had an easy path to a title. Champions being robbed by insufficient and frankly nonsensical narratives has become a sad happenstance. Stay tuned to see a few more disrespectful takes, which look really bad right now. Here's why that disrespect is legitimately so sickening though. From a Raptor fan's perspective, NHL teams in Canada still haven't won a championship in over 30 years. Toronto winning an NBA title in 2019 was a breath of fresh air to not merely those within the city, but all across the country. Their joy was wiped away, however, when many south of the border continue to this day to label their winning ways as a fluke. Then, in the same year of the late Kobe Bean Bryant's sudden and devastatingly tragic passing, the Black Mamba's very Lakers with his best friend in LeBron James leading the way in 2020 
won a ring that brought a much needed sense of pride and joy to not just diehard basketball fans in the city of Los Angeles, but the chip meant so much for those grieving such a cultural icon in Kobe's death. LA's title was only to be discredited by those claiming their Disneyland ring happened because they were quote unquote, bubble guppies. For Milwaukee in 2021, their first chip in 50 years brought much needed revenue to a city that lost over 20 businesses and 1 billion plus in riot damage in 2020. Dismissing the fact that it's a game of inches, fans would say the only reason they won was because of a big toe. If Kevin Durant's foot was behind the arc, Brooklyn would have sent Game 7 of the Eastern Conference semifinals to overtime. So Chip taken away because of that one thinly veiled narrative. For Golden State in 2022, Stephen Curry had once and for all proved that he was always more important to their championship than Kevin Durant, labeling the narrative that he was a Robin for all these years to be utterly false. Fans would instead claim that Golden State got lucky due to injuries, which is incredibly disappointing. And that leads us into the increasingly discredited 2023 Denver Nuggets. Despite the Nuggets becoming the first Western Conference team not from California or Texas to win the championship since 1979, which when you take into account is an absolutely insane fact, you have casuals like Mannix still discrediting Nikola Jokic, who fueled his team to the most dominant championship run in recent memory. That said, Denver may have got a bit carried away when Vince Lombardi would introduce coach Mike Malone at their parade with this. He came into this world as the son of a coach, but in these playoffs, he became the Lakers' daddy! The Lakers' daddy! The Lakers' daddy! The reason I don't think you heard nearly as big of a crowd reaction on that joke as opposed to the ones Jokic, Malone, among others were making is because it was unnecessarily backhanded. First of all, standing right next to the players, coaching staff, and front office execs, introducing them as a direct representative of the team who's not actually on the team, this man, quite frankly, didn't have the right to trash talk for them. But the delivery was pretty damn hilarious. I think it was scripted to be more of a somber moment than that, but funny nonetheless. What's most cringe and generally annoying, and this is coming from a guy who's oftentimes guilty of being those two things, is the fact that it's a weird look that they were calling out the Lakers after winning it all. Especially considering the fact that after LA made a graceful exit despite getting swept, the Lakers didn't have a single negative thing to say about Denver. They had nothing but respect for the Nuggets in the aftermath of getting defeated. This was LeBron after getting swept. This is this, um, you know, if not, one of the best, probably the best team that we've played since we've been together for our four years. Um, they just well orchestrated, well put together. They have scoring, they have shooting, they have playmaking, smarts, they have length, they have depth. And when you have a guy like Joker, who as big as he is, but also as cerebral he is, you can't really make many mistakes. And even when you guard him for one of the best possessions that you think you've guarded him, he puts the ball behind his head, Larry Bird style, and shoots it 50 feet in the air, and it goes in. I think he did it like four or five times this series. So, you, you do like this to him. <laughs> there it is. I know how great he is. I know how great Joker is. Based off that more than respectful response from LeBron, I thought that speech from Nuggets play-by-play -play announcer, I think that's his position anyway, in Vic Lombardi, wasn't terrible, but it was just off-putting, especially, first off, the saying daddy so aggressively part. And secondly, giving bulletin board material to a team that should be directly back in the championship picture, fighting for a title with you next year. It's not cool. But back to the disrespectful takes about the Nuggets, and then there was the antics of Nick Wrong, who for a full exposition about, watch the video on your screen after this. One take not included in that video was Nick Wright tearing into two players who have fought their way back from typically career-ending injuries. I'll preface that take from Nick in saying, the Denver Post wrote regarding the 2018 number 14 overall pick Michael Porter Jr., quote, the Nuggets made a bad bet on a bad back, end quote. Suffering herniated discs in his lower back, Michael was forced to have micro disectomy surgery in the summer of 2018. The spasms in his back were so bad that he couldn't even fall asleep. 
the fact that he made it back to where he was this past season is in itself a great story that is underappreciated. Nick Wright, however, that man didn't feel that way. He instead took some time to rip into Porter in addition to Jamal Murray, who tore his ACL in 2021 and missed a season and a half, including two playoff runs. Take it away, Nick. Jamal Moore Murray and Michael Porter Jr. are not good enough to be the difference between a team being swept in round one and championship fate. Much to the dismay of Mr. Wrong, Murray and Porter Jr. were absolutely good enough to be the difference between a team that was gentlemen swept in round one and championship favorites. And last but not least, Evan Turner calling out Jokic for a lack of defense, then backing up his claim after the finals. Take it away, Evan. I, I think one thing that always used to uh, bother me a bit, and it's no slight to anybody, but you look at a Jokic. He has all these crazy triple doubles and he has like unbelievable numbers. But then when you factor in a defensive side of it, he's not the best defensively. And sometimes you look at it and it's like, is this a game of basketball or is this a game of offense or what people like to watch? Because I believe the game of basketball is supposed to have, you know, be effective from all levels. And that's why, you know, I don't get so mad when Giannis wins MVP because he does it on both ends of the floor and he's not being picked on in somebody's locker room. I've been in a locker room and We've been told to put Jokic in the pick and roll every time. If you go back and look at Dame Willard, he's had like two or three 60-point games versus Denver and 50 and da da da. So I kind of want that to be adjusted. I really want winning totally. to go into factor because what, what Jason Tatum is doing right now, I believe is still at a top level. And, and to a certain extent, if he was on a team by himself, he could be averaging 50. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Bro, I'm out, man. That nigga's tripping. As Bleacher Report writer Andy Bailey pointed out, to make that take from Turner look devastatingly dead wrong, during Jokic's career, the Nuggets are plus 6.7 points per 100 possessions with Jokic on the floor and minus 5.1 with him off. Over that same stretch, Denver has allowed 1.7 fewer points per 100 possessions with Jokic on the floor. As written by The Ringer, on actions that result in a shot or a pass that leads to a shot, Jokic defended pick and rolls produced just 102.2 points per 100 direct plays. For comparison in these playoffs, Jaron Jackson Jr. was at 102.6, Anthony Davis was at 106.5, and Draymond Green was at 107.9. Quote unquote, he's an elite defender in the pick and roll, Murray says. So based off that, the clip we just saw a minute ago from former NBA player Evan Turner was a provably horrible take. As you can see, the disrespectful antics towards the Nuggets are sickening. Instead of hating, maybe we should just let them enjoy their franchise's first championship, one that some fans have waited 47 years for. If you enjoy that video and want to see more, help the channel reach 100k by subscribing. This was DFlow, and I'll see you next video.